Hi, I'm Charlie Kasov. I'm a math teacher, and today we're going to learn strategies for solving proportions. Now, when you're dealing with proportions, you have two kinds. You have direct and indirect. So let's look at direct proportions first. Let's say we have a proportion where we say there's three people for every 10 cars. So when we set up the proportion, maybe they only tell us how many people we have. Then they say, OK, well, there's three people for every 10 cars. How many cars are there for uh, 15 people? So if we have 15 people, we want to know the number of cars. We can call this x. We can call it question mark. No matter what, with the direct proportion, you're going to cross multiply. So 3 times x is 3x equals 10 times 15, which is 150. So 3x equals 150. We divide each side by 3, and we get x equals 50. Now, it's important to keep track of what x represents. Here we have people over cars equals people over cars. So x equals 50 cars. Now, with inverse proportion, it's slightly different. I like to keep mine different, where direct proportion I do people to cars, like x1 over y1 equals x2 over y2. With inverse proportion, we should do x1 y1 equals x2 y2. So if we said that 3 and 10 were inversely proportional, we would say 3 times 10 equals 15 times y. We, don't, it, we would call it y in this case, because we are calling the cars the y term. So 3 times 10 equals 30 equals 15y. So y is going to equal 2. If the number of people to cars are inversely proportional, if there's 3 people for 10 cars, then 15 people will have 2 cars. So I'm Charlie Kasov, and you just learned some strategies for solving proportions. Thanks a lot.